Today is a great day for Yu-Gi-Oh. Wait, shit, wrong intro. How's it going guys? It's Aurora Yu-Gi-Oh here, and I know I haven't uploaded in ages, I'm sorry, but you know, I got a lot of shit on my plate right now, and I'm not even supposed to be doing this, but you know, I'm gonna procrastinate on my schoolwork uh, and uh, do this instead, so... Recently, you may have seen my friend's Buster Lock deck profile for Dragon Link that we made last month in April, and I decided, uh, like, I also made the deck, by the way, uh, as you can see here, and I decided, you know, I would show off my build, which is admittedly the superior build, not just because, you know, I'm so much better, but, like, legitimately, it's just, it's just way better. Uh, this is very, very similar to the MST TV build, I will admit that. Uh, that's what this deck kind of, like, I use as a baseline, but I do have my own different ratios and tech choices. And I figured, instead of going in order by Monster, Spell, and Trap, we're going to start, like, by order in the packages. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. So, I'm going to go ahead and get right into this without wasting too much more time. Let's go ahead and start with our first package, being the Rockets. So, to start off, we have three Rocket Tracer. 2 Rocket Recharger, 1 Apps Router, 3 Quick Launch, and 1 Boot Sector. So this is what I meant by packages. We go in order of cards that are like different engines, because this deck is like all engines. Uh, mostly, you know, kind of similar to Dogmatica and Vukshadal, where it's just all engines. That just so happen to synchronize with each other. And let me focus this real quick. I'm sorry. It's very hard to focus when I have both decks on screen, because one's significantly smaller than the other. So, uh, this is our rocket package. Three tracers, kind of, you know, mandatory. Uh, this is a card, like, these two right here are cards that I predict uh, seeing on the bit ban list. Most likely quick launch, because, you know, it's just free. And it wouldn't hurt, like, rocket players too much. And then again, if you're playing pure rockets, you know, you're just weird. Uh, recharger. I've seen a lot of people cutting the second recharger for something like Silver Rocket. And while I think Silver Rocket's a pretty neat card, because, like, a mini Lithosagum... I just feel like it never would resolve, so I just opted not to play it. Plus, a free monster reborn for any dark in your grave is kind of ridiculous. And then Apps Router is just a good card. Extender if you need it. Adds your tracer. What's not to love? Quick Launch is just ridiculous. It, it Literally, it's one of those uh, special summon from deck archetypal things that's not only a quick play, but also has no restrictions. It's not once per turn. All it does is blow the monster up during the end of the turn. Seriously, why isn't this card on the list, Konami? And then Boot Sector Launch. A lot of people are playing two Boot Sector, I've seen. And if you play two Boot Sector, I'm sorry for your loss. Because, like, Boot Sector is an okay card. I mean, yeah, it, I'm not going to say it's a bad card, obviously. Like, it gets you stuff on the field easily. But if you draw it, it's just dead. And playing a second one doesn't really help because having the second copy doesn't do much. Like, you get discard fodder, but, like, what if you draw into both? Now you're turbo fucked. Because it's not a starter or anything like that. Technically, if you have other rockets in hand, yeah, but that's literally it. So, only one boot sector. Uh, that's it for the rocket package. This is definitely the superior Dragon Link build is the one with the rockets because rockets are just really good. Uh, on to the next package. This is going to be our chaos package. This one's pretty big, so I'm going to try to get it to fit on the camera, which I just bumped all to all hell. I am sorry. So, to start off, we have two Star Leech Seyfert, one Black Dragon, and one White Dragon. One Brotar, one Chaos Dragon Levianir, and let me scoot this up, and three copies of Chaos Space. And let me kind of adjust this a little bit for the people in the back, you know, kind of get it a little bit organized. There we go, that's fine. So, um, let's go over each of these things. Starleash Safer is broken. <laughs> Like, literally, you get to search any dragon you want by sending guys that equate to the level. And so, you normal summon him, and that's just a free plus one, because you get one of the baby dragons, and then that baby dragon will search another baby dragon whenever you go into Striker. So, this card is, like, a Link 2, like, on its own, and I... Whoa, what was that? <laughs> uh, but this card is actually just ridiculous. If you Monster Reborn it, especially off of, you know, any Reborn thing... You know, it's really good. Uh, it's also part of the main combo, the three-card combo that is really, really good in this deck. And then these guys, I see why they're at one now. <laughs> uh, I feel like these are another things that are uh, on, like, kind of the chopping block for the ban list. But then again, Chaos Space would, you know, be kind of useless other than Levianir. Uh, Brotar. 
So this is funny, right? A lot of like in the main Dragon Link deck, Brotar is just a lot better, and just in general, a lot of people se uh, seem to think that Brotar is kind of like a mandatory card. But I mean, I barely resolve him because the thing I'm going to discard to get the Levy in here is literally just something I'd rather keep in hand. So I mean, I barely resolve Brotar. I barely special summon him, so he's kind of just there. I don't know. But speaking of Levy in here, this is my favorite card in the entire deck. Because this is your main out to literally everything. Like, even ignoring the fact that the hand rip is actually ridiculous. I was playing against Medolce's last week, by the way. And I in game two, I literally hit the Dark Ruler out of all five cards in his hands. And it was hilarious, because Dark Ruler is like the main weakness of this deck, right? But Levianir is such a good card. The non-targeting two-card destruction removal is actually insane. And like I said, this is your main out to literally everything. And if you can't get it out, then, you know, if you, their opponent breaks your board, you're kind of fucked. So, this card's definitely a mandatory. Maybe I'll play two. Interesting. But, uh, Chaos Space is a really good searcher. You can, uh, send your hand traps and stuff if you want to grab your baby dragons. You can grab the Levy in here. It's just overall a really good searcher. Uh, you know, even if you open this or one of the babies, it's fine, because you still get to use both of them. And you still get the draw. Like, the draw is very underrated on this card. I've clutched hands so much just using the draw effect, so I feel like, uh, like you know, people aren't taking advantage of that. They definitely should. Next up is our small Dragoonity package. We have the one copy of Phalanx, the two copies of Dragon Ravine, and the one Divine Lance. So people have been looking at me like I'm actually insane for playing two Ravine, especially because I'm not playing the Dragoonity build or the Remuses, which I'm not paying an arm and a leg for a Remus, by the way. I don't care how good that one card combo is. And by, I just realized he's only like 20 bucks, isn't he? But still, that's an arm and a leg for me since you have to play three. <laughs> but I like Dragon Ravine as a card. I legitimately do because uh, not only is it kind of the same situation I argued earlier for like if you want to play two boot sector with striker, if you grab one, you can just grab the other. But this is a soft once per turn. So you can activate another one in your hand if you have it. And also it's kind of a starter because you can just activate Dragon Ravine. Send, uh, discard literally anything. Send Apps Router. Apps Router, search for Rocket Tracer. And then start to go off from there. And I just really like it as a card. Because sometimes you want to send more than one thing per turn. I found situations where I wanted to send both the DMZ and the Apps Router. So, I really like Dragon Ravine it too. Also, if it gets negated, you know, you can just activate another one. Because, uh, this is going to get negated more often than Boot Sector is. Because Boot Sector can only get smacked with, like, an Ogre when you're going first. So, Dragon Ravine is just really good at two. Uh, Divine Lance, I really don't resolve since you, you want to summon Phalanx off of Halk in both of the main combos. But it's nice to kind of have it, you know, as a crutch, just in case. Because even if you summon him off the Divine Lance in the combo, instead of the Halk, it, your combo just doesn't mess up at all. It, it just kind of like, you know, you know, the Protector Whelp isn't as necessary. Because you're going to be summoning the uh, Dragon Buster off of the lock, of, uh, not the lock, off the Halk. So, I like Dra uh, Dragonity Divine Lance at one. But that's it for the Dragoonity package. I'm not playing any of the other fancy Dragoonity cards or anything because this isn't a Dragoonity build. And on to the very, very small uh, Red Eyes package. Literally just two Black Metal, like my foreign cards, the only foreign card I've ever played. And then the one Red MD. So a lot of people are torn between one Black Metal and three Black Metal. MST, uh, I believe, plays three so because it's uh, one of the main starters for your basic combo. Uh, but I really don't like that as much because, yeah, cool, it's a really good starter, but, you know, you don't want to see it more than once, especially because you'd rather summon it off, like, the LP. So I don't want to play only one because I would like to start with it sometimes because it can help facilitate your beginning plays with uh, the Red MD banishing the Striker and specialing guys from Grave, but... I also don't want to play three because I don't want to draw into more of it, especially late game. If you can somehow go into late game, you do not want to be drawing dead cards like this after you've already resolved the effect once or just use Red MD in general. Now on to just the random miscellaneous guys. We have two Noctovision, free extender, free draw power. It can protect your face down cards if you want to like side stuff in. I don't know what you'd side. I don't like what rivalry. <laughs> um... The one DMZ, this facilitates your Buster Lock. It's the guy that equips thingies. It also facilitates your Phalanx. Very good card overall. He's also a very big wall. 
I really like this card. Also, a lot of people don't know that you can banish it from your grave and blow up all things equipped to one of your guys and it can attack again. So this can also finish games for you. It's like it turns your Savage Dragon into a Boral Sword. And then here's your Dragon Buster because who would have thought? Buster Lock's really good. This is like the main problem that people have when going against me because they're just like, okay, normally with a Dragon Link board, I can just activate Dark Ruler no more and kind of win. But now I, have to, I, now I have to also have an out to the... Um, to the Dragon Buster, which is really funny. But that's going to do it for the actual Dragon part of this deck, or, you know, at least the um, the packages and stuff. I have a few spell cards that are also Dragon-related, but on to the Hand Traps. Uh, the lineup I'm playing is three Gamma and one Driver and three copies of Artifact Lancia. So hear me out. The reason I'm playing this specific package is because, A, they're all lights, meaning you can send them off Chaos Space or banish them off of Collapse Serpent. Gamma specifically being one that can't be normal summoned or set, meaning you can bounce it uh, back from your banish zone into the deck off of Chaos Space, which is really funny. And then also, uh, you know, Gamma's just really good in general, but the Lancia, every single person really at my locals plays decks that banish, and so Lancia just kind of shuts down everyone. And unlike Dino, where, you know, it's kind of uh, less of an ideal situation, not because, you know, you're going to banish on your opponent's turn or anything, but mainly just because in this deck, you can really just abuse Lancia even more because you can use it during their turn if they're going first, and you can banish it to summon, like, other things on your turn. So, you know, it's kind of like the best of both worlds. And again, like literally the banished decks at my locals are insane. So, like, not maining three Lancia is basically a sin. On to the rest of the deck, we have three copies of World Legacy Guard Dragon. I cannot speak highly enough of this card. This card is actually just broken, broken. Because not only is it literally just a monster reborn for any of your guys, the best part is that you can just take LP and go, boop. That's literally it. That's like the main part of this card. And I used to play this actually in my um, True King Dino combo that I posted back in, I think it was June or July of 2018, 2019. I remember that, and I hated that deck, by the way. Like, when it went off, it went off hard. That was back when Agrapane was still a thing, and Ib. But, uh, yeah, it bricked so much. Like, it bricked more than Monarchs. That says a lot, because you can build a house with Monarchs. But this card is so good in this deck, I would never play less than three. And also, I think it's another candidate for the chopping block for the ban list. And then, of course, we have one Monster Reborn, because there's nothing wrong with playing Monster Reborn in a combo deck. And one called by because you don't want to get your thing stopped, even though, depending on your hand, it's really hard to stop you. And that's going to have to do it for the main deck. I believe it's 42 cards, maybe 43. Uh, but on to the extra. So we have two copies of Striker Dragon. So I've been thinking, actually, of getting myself a third because this card is really good. And sometimes you go into it and you don't really, like, you won't have a chance to use its effect because you're using it just to get something off of the board. And so having the third would be really nice. Um, and also, you know, I just feel like the second Heavenly Spheres that I have, I just never go into, really. Except for when I mess up. So, um, three, two or three Striker Dragon, you can kind of, like, balance back and forth. A lot of people are playing two and three, you know, just kind of, like, swapping around. And I feel like one of those deck profile guys that's just constantly picking up the cards and dropping them back down. But Striker Dragon's a really good card. This is definitely another candidate for the ban list. Uh, I'm probably going to sell these, by the way, within the span of like a month, like right before the ban list, because I kind of want to make my money back and play something else. Uh, and so, you know, uh, it's two striker, three striker, do whatever you want to do unless the ban list comes out. Uh, one LP and one Pisty, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and then we have two Heavenly Spheres. Like I said, I really never do the second one unless it's like late game and I have nothing else at all. Uh, so I might cut this for the third striker. Uh, really good card, by the way, though. Um, Dragoonity Knight Romulus. Uh, Romulus is also one of my favorite cards in the extra deck, and also he's very shiny, but, uh, literally, you can search Dragon Ravine, you can search Divine Lance, if you, uh, really want to, you can play the Dragoonity cards and, like, search the glow and everything. Uh, his second effect we don't talk about, but he has the downpointing arrows, he's, he's just a really good card in general. I, I really like him. Uh, one Protector Whelp to send your Buster Lock bitch, and... That's really all I have to say about that. That's all he does. I hate leaving him on the board, but I sometimes have to. Uh, one Quad Boral Dragon. So I used to think this guy was really bad, and then I saw people were playing it, and I was like, why are people playing this? This card's actual dog cheeks. But then you realize it turns your Helka of Fibrax or your Protector Whelp into a free Savage Dragon, which is really funny. And so, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and then, speaking of Halk, here's your Halka Fibrax, because you're playing a combo deck with tuners in it. And then, one Appaloosa, because Negate Go Burr. And one Boral Sword, because, you know, you kind of got to end the game somehow. And also, you're playing Rockets. It'd be a shame not to play the Boral Sword. And that's it for the Link Monsters. Now, on to the Synchros, the one Savage Dragon, because it's Savage Dragon. You're playing fucking Rockets. And then, also, here's the Money Mud Dragon. And I know what you're probably thinking. Oh, you're just going to whip out this fat Red-Eyes Dark Dragoon. Well, you see, the thing is, I was on EDO Pro, right? Because I was like, Dark Dragoon is $80. I'm not going to, like, rip my kidneys out and sell them for a fucking mediocre boss monster, in my opinion. And so I decided, hmm, I'm going to go on EDO, and I'm going to put, uh, fucking... And I'm going to put quotation plus one. And that's going to find anything that ha requires a specific material and then one or more uh, whatever materials, right? And so, what I end up finding that's really, really funny is this. Invoked Kaliga can be summoned in Dragon Link. Let that sink in. So, the main end board you're going to try to go for is a Kaliga, a Buster Lock, a Savage Dragon, and a Heavenly Spheres. And you're probably going to think, oh, well, I mean, you just kind of like shut down your own negates and everything, you only get one negate. Well, that's kind of like the, uh, what, how am I going to word this? It's kind of like the double-edged sword, right, of playing, uh, like, against this deck is that, okay, so basically, they're either going to have a Kaliga just sit there, and I'm not going to be able to do anything, but and I try to out the other uh, stuff, or, like, the Buster Lock or something, or I can out the Kaliga and then have to deal with a Buster Lock, a Bounce, a Special from deck, uh, a Savage Dragon, you know, all that. And so, also, your Kaliga can be protected by your Savage Dragon if you, um, use, like, if they use, like, Imperm or something. And, uh, I just really like Kaliga. Uh, it has backfired on me sometimes, I'll admit, but not as much as I expected. And so, I'm very content with playing Kaliga. I, I feel like it's a pretty solid choice. It shuts down a lot of decks, like, especially in combination with the Buster Lock. Like, it's really hard for them to out unless they have Dark Ruler. But even with the Dark Ruler, they're still under Buster Lock, which is really funny. And so... That's going to have to do it for the deck profile. Let me go ahead and get things back onto the screen here. There we go. You can see the lovely called by the grave. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm going to actually put this rocket tracer on top because, you know, that would be Dragon Link worthy. But, yeah, let me know what you thought about the deck profile. I feel like I put kind of like a fun little unique twist in some of the aspects of Dragon Link with my ratios and, of course, my tech cards. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought specifically about it, if there's anything you would change, anything that you would do differently, uh, just anything you think would be better or worse. Uh, but for now, I'm going to have to see you in the next one, which I don't know when it's going to be, but whatever. Uh, peace among worlds, yada yada. This is Aurora signing off. Mm -hmm.